and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little and I'm a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. We begin with our call to worship. May God, our glorious Father, open the eyes of your heart so that you might see the hope to which he is calling you, the richness of the inheritance he has prepared for you, and the power that is at work among you. We worship in the grace of God. Our opening prayer. God of grace, you blow the breath of life into our lungs. You have formed us in your image, and yet we acknowledge that sometimes we are not who you would have us be. You challenge us to embrace the refining fire of your love, to meet you on the threshing floor of life, to be washed as with fuller soap. But in our heart of hearts, we would rather keep those things that would be removed in such an encounter. Through your grace, life-giving God, accept us as we are, unrefined, unwashed, the chaff mixed in with the grain, and help us to move into a new way of being. Your grace is wider than our wildest imaginings. Your grace embraces us as we are and where we are and draws us out to be the people we were created to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Grace is one of the most important concepts in the Bible, Christianity, and the world. It is most clearly expressed in the promises of God revealed in Scripture and embodied in Jesus Christ. Grace is the love of God shown to the unlovely, the peace of God given to the restless, the unmerited favor of God. It is kindness from God that we don't deserve. In Christian terms, grace can generally be defined as God's favor toward the unworthy or God's benevolence on the undeserving. In His grace, God is willing to forgive us and bless us, despite the fact that we fall short of living righteously. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, in Romans chapter 3. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him we have also obtained access by faith into His grace, in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5. Grace is most needed and best understood in the midst of sin, suffering, and brokenness. We live in a world of earning, deserving, and merit, and these result in judgment. That's why everyone wants and needs grace. Judgment destroys. Only grace makes us alive. Grace has also been described as the opposite of karma which is all about getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve and not getting what you do deserve. While everyone desperately needs it, grace is not about us. Grace is fundamentally a word about God, His uncoerced initiative and pervasive, extravagant demonstrations of care and favor. Michael Horton writes, In grace, God gives nothing less than himself. Grace, then, is not a third thing or substance mediating between God and sinners, but is Jesus Christ in redeeming action. Christians live every day by the grace of God. We receive forgiveness according to the riches of God's grace, and grace drives our sanctification. Paul tells us, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly salvation, pardon me, and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. Spiritual growth doesn't happen overnight. We grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace transforms our desires, motivations, and behavior. In fact, God's grace grounds and empowers everything in the Christian life. Grace is the basis for our Christian identity. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Grace is the basis for our standing before God, this grace in which we stand. Grace is the basis for our behavior. We behaved in the world by the grace of God. Grace is the basis for our living. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, by the grace of life. 
Christ is the basis for our holiness. God called us to be a holy calling because of his own purpose and grace. Grace is the basis for our strength for living. Be strengthened by the grace that is Jesus Christ, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace. Grace is the way for our speaking. Let your speech always be gracious. Grace is the basis for our serving. Serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Grace is the basis for our sufficiency. My grace is sufficient for you. God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Grace is the basis for our response to difficulty and suffering. We get grace to help in time of need. And when you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Grace is the basis for our participation in God's mission. As recipients of grace, we are privileged to serve as agents of grace. Believers receive grace, are encouraged to continue in grace, and are called to testify to the grace of God. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. God's mission is to the entire world. Grace is the basis for our future. God and his grace is everlasting. Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Grace is the basis for our hope beyond death. Grace reigns through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The gospel is all about God's grace through Jesus. That's why Paul calls it the gospel of the grace of God and the word of his grace. It is through grace that God works effective change in our hearts and lives. Grace gives us a new life which is not condemned by God. Through God's grace, we are forgiven, transforming our thinking, resulting in the renewal of our mind and heart. Through grace, we live the kind of life that God would like every one of his children to experience. God's grace saves us. And according to Ephesians chapter 2, For by the grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. It's important to see here that by God's grace we have been saved. It is not by our works. Salvation is done strictly on the basis of God's grace. God's gift of grace comes through the cross of Jesus, not our works. God's grace justifies us. According to Romans chapter 3, being justified is a gift by his grace through the redemption which is Christ Jesus. We may be considered to be right by God only because of his grace and the sacrifice of Jesus, which is available to us because Jesus willingly laid down his life for us, paying the price we deserved for our rebellion against God. Our justification is not something we receive because of good works, but because of the payment J Jesus paid for us at the cross when he suffered and died. God's grace sanctifies us. And according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. Indeed, not only are we standing right with God, but also our right living depends on grace. Sanctification is the process of being set aside, in our case, being set aside for the purposes of God. 1 Corinthians says, But by his doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. God's grace empowers us to service. God wants us to be so full of his grace in our lives that we can say with Paul, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me did not prove vain. But I labored even more than all of them, yet on, not I, but the grace of God with me. The grace of God is not earned by works, but it produces work done in his service. 
Grace, which is God's life, comes into us and works in us and through us so that we can be all and do all in his service. Philippians chapter 2 tells us, For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This means that whatever gifts and abilities God has given us by his grace, we should use them for his glory. God's grace and blessings were not given simply for us to sit in church and feel good. Rather, they were given that we might not only be blessed, but also be a blessing. In the light of all that has been said, it is clear that it would be difficult to overestimate the importance of God's grace as far as our lives are concerned. Without grace, we would not only be useless in God's sight, but we would be lost. There is no work that man can do to make him good enough for God. Everything that we do outside of God's grace is worthless. Everything good that comes in us and through us is only by the grace of God. Grace saves us, justifies us, sanctifies us, and empowers us for his service. Grace-filled living is exercising the gifts that grace provides and spreads the gospel of grace to a hurting and dying world. The gospel of the grace of God is the message everyone needs. The word of grace is proclaimed from every page of the Bible and ultimately revealed in Jesus Christ. The last verse of the Bible summarizes the message from Genesis to Revelation. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Revelation 22:21. Through Jesus, we have all received grace upon grace, the gracious and undomesticated grace of God. And now let us, God's people, pray. O God of enduring mercy, as we sometimes grumble in the wilderness of our own making, let us look up out of our earthly frustrations to see the true light and gift of your eternal life through Christ. Lord God of goodness, you deliver us by grace through our faith. O God of enduring mercy, as we observe and participate with the course of those in worldly power on our planet, in our country, and our local community, Help us to advocate for all who are lost in the darkness of human trespass. Lord God of goodness, you deliver us by grace through our faith. O God of enduring mercy, shelter the hearts of those suffering through illness, addiction, or homelessness, and give rest to those who worry and care for them. O God of enduring mercy, clothe the grieving in the peace of knowing that our faithful loved ones live in eternal resurrection with you. Lord God of goodness, you deliver us by grace through our faith. God of resurrection and salvation, strengthen our faith to acknowledge and accept your free gift of grace so that we may live as you created us, not to perish, but to have eternal life. We ask through our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, who live and reign with you as one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. <laughs>